Welcome to the short presentation of the Community Application Editor. The Community Application Editor is a framework for collaborative generation of web applications in a community of practice. It focuses on bringing all members of a community together right from the start on and aims at providing methods that help people without a strong technical background to take part in the development of community applications. In this video I want to show you the generation of a complete web application with the help of the Community Application Editor including a backend microservice with database access and a widget-based frontend. So what we want to do today is we want to create a whiteboard application. What you can see here is a mock-up of what an end user might have in mind how a whiteboard application should look like. You can see the widget itself, the whiteboard. You can see a collaborative editing space. You can see a new page button which should store the content. And you see a field representing the saving status. So in this case it says page stored. So this is how it looks like in the mind of an end user. Now let's start generating this application. In this case the application consists of one widget representing the whiteboard with the collaborative editing space. As well as one microservice which will be the one that stores the content to a database if you click this new page button. We will start by developing the front-end component. All you can see here happens in a near real-time collaborative fashion, meaning that multiple users can edit this model simultaneously and every change gets propagated directly to all other users. We start by adding a widget element. This widget element has some properties you can see here in the property browser. The first property is a name, so we name it whiteboard. Then we give it some description and also a name and an email and of course the widget wide and the widget height is needed as well as the microservice address. The microservice address is the corresponding endpoint in the microservice we will create later on. So in our case we will give it some local host address so that we can directly run it in this demonstration and don't have to deploy it on some server. After we have added this initial element the widget we have to think about which HTML elements our widget should consist of. So in our case we have identified three HTML elements our widget should have. Let's start with the first one and the most obvious one. It should be the whiteboard itself. In our case it's a text area. This text area needs an ID which represents the usual HTML element ID as well as two additional attributes we have to set. The first one is that this element is static meaning that it won't be modified by some function we will model later on. And the second one is that it's collaborative, because that was a requirement we set in the beginning. Let's continue with the second attribute. In this case it's a button, which will represent the save button later on, or a store page button. Um, this is not a collaborative, but still a static element, so it will not get modified by a function, but it has no collaborative features. So the last element we need is the status message element, in our case represented by an input field. This element is not static and not collaborative. It's not static because it will get modified by a function, of course a function that sends the request to the microservice store our page and the status message should react to this call. Okay, let's connect these three elements to the widget. You can do this either by a right click on the element and then select connect to or you can select the corresponding edge from the palette widget on your right. So we will now fast forward this video a bit to show you the complete model. So here it is. As you can see here are the three HTML elements we have just created together with some additional elements. So the first one we want to mention here is this event. It's bind to the button and it calls a function. This function again calls a microservice. As you can see, it's a post call with plain text and uh, empty paths, meaning that we call the base path of the microservice. The last important element here is the element update edge, which indicates that the function updates the input field with the status. Okay, now we finish modeling, so we save our front end component, give it a name, in our case, sample whiteboard widget and a version, and then we save our model. So we click on store. We'll wait a second until the model is stored, and what's happening now is that the source code of this model gets generated on GitHub. So after a quick look at GitHub, we will continue with modeling the microservice. 
here is the microservice generator, which is the second of three views of the community application editor. And we will start generating our microservice, which will be responsible for storing the whiteboard content to a database. So we start by adding a RESTful resource, which has as attributes a name, of course. So that's a resource name. It has a path, which should match the resource entry point we uh, gave in the widget. And we can specify a developer as well. Now we fast forward again. So this is the complete model. Let's go through the new entities. So here you see the RESTful resource we have created previously. This is an HTTP method the service office. So you can see method type is post. Here we have an HTTP response saying internal error. So this method can send back an internal error response as well as the created response you see here. As the results have text and some name and result name, you'll see later on what this means. And it also contains an HTTP payload, which is the input of the method. So let's quickly show the database. So you have the database with the credentials. You have a table called page. And you have two columns. One is the ID and the second one is the content. So now let's store this microservice. So we give it a name again. Give it a version. So this is analog to the front-end component generation. And we click on store. We'll wait again until the model is stored. And then we can see on GitHub our generated model. So here it is. And what we'll do now is we will clone this service. So we copy the address, add it in this case to our Eclipse IDE, and import the project. So this Git project is now imported. Now we have to import the project from the Git project. So, and as you see here, this is done with some clicks. And here we have our complete service. Let's build this service. So we run an AND script here and the service gets automatically built and tested. This takes a little bit of time and while these automatic tests run through, let me tell you some quick things about the server we use here. So this is last up here. It was developed at our university chair and it's basically an application server with extra peer-to-peer -peer functionality. So you can create a network of servers which can communicate internally. And it also features a RESTful web connector. So the build has finished. Let's take a look at the source code. And we start by taking a look at the tests. So here you see a test class. And so this method here, test post videos, was automatically generated and it queries the HTTP method we have just modeled in the whiteboard service. Here we have the main service class and it contains the HTTP method we have just modeled. So you can see here it has the same return types and the same inputs we have modeled before. So now that we have modeled both our microservice and our widget, let's come to the third part of our community application editor, which is the application generator. It allows us to combine microservices and widgets. So here we have the two lists with the available widgets and microservices. And now let's select our just generated microservice and also our widget. After we've done that, we go again to the persistence widget, give it a name and a version as previously done with the widget and microservice model. And then we store it. We wait again until it's stored. What now happens is that the community application editor in the background generates a communication view. This communication view allows us to see the dependencies between the components. So we have retrieved the model. Let's refresh the screen. And then we will see how our microservice and our widgets interact. So it will calculate now that we have modeled a microservice call that asks this post method of our microservice to store a model. So here is the model. Let's sort this a bit. So we have below the red resource and on the right we have the widget and you see the microservice called the dependency in between it. So what you can see here is our generated application which contains both the microservice and the widget and the widget is stored on the GitHub pages branch which allows you to directly add it to a widget space. So let's take a look at the source code here. So this is a microservice. We will continue with this afterwards in Eclipse. 
and here you find the front end component on the GitHub Pages branch, as I previously said. We will now continue adding the business logic to our microservice. So what is marked blue here is the body of the HTTP method post videos, and we have added the SQL query formulation. So nothing fancy here. It's just a connection that is retrieved from the already instantiated database we have modeled and then we have formulated a statement and we execute it and what you can see here as well is that we have taken over the HTTP responses we have already we already had generated so it says here created page or problems so let's recompile the service with the updated logic and after that I will show you what we have to manually change in the front-end widget to get the desired behavior. And I will show you this on GitHub right after these tests have run through. So here we are. You can see there hasn't changed that much, so it's only the content that gets propagated to the microservice while we're sending the requests as well as the status value. We don't want it to only say updated element, but we want to actually show what the service has responded to the store request. So here we are. We have written our complete application. This is the widget. We have just added to a new role space. And here we have a second instance of that role space to show you the collaborative feature of our text area. Let's first start our microservice server. So this test script is also part of the generated microservice and let's type something and as you see it gets propagated to the other window with a technique called YJS. This is a library also created at our university chair and you see if we click store page it also says created page which is the response from a microservice. So that's basically it. If you want to try it out yourself feel free to click the links in this video description and thank you for watching.